Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to see you all here. So today's video is going to be about a basic computational concept. We are deviating from bioinformatics and talking about a very basic computational concept. Um, and this is something that I had made a note of in my previous video where we were trying to set up a variant calling pipeline. And I did say then that all my executables for uh, my tools are in the path in Linux. So today's video is about uh, what does it mean to add the executables for your tools in path and how is it beneficial. So this video is going to be helpful for anyone who hasn't extensively worked in Linux and is just starting out trying to set up pipelines in Linux. So you have heard me using this term very frequently executable and I did talk about adding the executables to the path in Linux. So it's important for us to first understand what is an executable or rather an executable file. So an executable file is nothing but it runs a program when opened. So for Windows user, you have seen these files with an extension of .exe and for Mac users, you have seen these files as .dmg or .app. So basically these are the files that you download and from your app store or maybe from some, some other source and you download these files and it runs a program. So executable files are of two types, compiled and uncompiled. So the compiled ones are the ones that you get from the app stores or from other sources which are in .exe or .dmg or .app format. And the uncompiled are uh, executable files are the scripts. So basically we created an executable script file in uh, a previous video. So basically a variant calling script. Basically we use the, that script to perform certain functions. So that is also an executable file which was ending in .sh or .r or .pl. <coughs> and these scripts are also used to perform some functions. So basically that also is considered as an executable file. So now that we have understood what an executable file is, let us also talk about some other terms that we commonly use and that is shell. So before I talk about shell, let's get like a basic idea of the Linux architecture. So at one end we have user request and at other end we have hardware. So the user request has to be communicated to hardware. But it's not directly that the user commands go to the hardware. There are certain intermediate frameworks that play a role to relay the messages to the hardware. So basically that's where the shell and something called as kernel comes into picture. So the shell is basically a program that acts as a user interface to send commands to kernel and then kernel interprets the commands and tell the CPU and the hardware to carry out a particular task. A shell is nothing but it just provides us with an interface to write commands to interact with the computer. So uh, there are various types of shells uh, but the one that, that we commonly use is bash and other types of shells are csh, ksh, sh, tcsh and so on and so forth but the one that we commonly use is bash. So now I want to show you how does the flow of information from the user request to the hardware work. How does the sh shell and the kernel play a role in relaying information from the user to the hardware. So let's say a user is trying to get a list of files in a folder and user wants to run ls. Now ls is the most basic command in Linux which lists the files. Now how does shell transfer the information as to what is it supposed, what is the hardware supposed to do? How, what does ls mean? So <clears throat> it basically finds ls in some folders. Basically it tries to find the executable for ls that is what is ls supposed to do is written in a code and it tries to find that ls executable code in one of its folders. And I'll be talking about what these folders and uh, what these uh, where these folders are basically stored in the upcoming um, slides. But basically it tries to find the executable for ls in one of these folders. And if it finds in one of the folders, then it just passes on that information to the kernel that, hey, I found ls in this user bin folder. So can you relay that information to the hardware so that hardware can run the computation and can provide the output to the user with a list of files. In this case, ls was found in one of the in these folders where shell is supposed to look for. And these are just the example folders. I'm just giving you a very simplified um, uh, overview of the process here. But let's say there is a situation where user tries to run a program like FastQC on sequencing reads. And this is something that we have performed in one of our previous videos. 
uh, in the variant calling video as well as in the video where we were trying to set up an RNA seq um, pipeline, we were trying to quantify the reads. We did uh, run uh, FastQC to um, assess the quality of the reads. So some some programs that we downloaded, we want um, the hardware to run FastQC because we have already installed. So basically, we pass on that information to Shell by running the command in Shell, or that is Bash. And then Shell looks for the FastQC executable, the code that is supposed to run FastQC in one of its folders. Again, it looks through its list of folders and guess what? It doesn't find FastQC executable in one of the folders and it throws you the error that says that FastQC not found. So at this point, there are two options. Either the user specifies the entire folder path and path to executable for FastQC in the script every time FastQC is used, or um, the folder where the FastQC was downloaded, the path to the executable can be added to the list of folders where Shell looks for executables. So basically the second option is the idea behind adding the executable to the path. So we'll be talking about in detail as well as I'll also demonstrate how to do that and how it makes um, uh, writing scripts easier in terms of not having to uh, mention the paths to the executables for all the tools when you're trying to run like multiple tools and trying to build a pipeline like we did in the previous video for uh, variant calling using GATK. So the next obvious question is how does Shell know where to search? So basically Shell has access to some variables that are called environmental variables and we'll talk about what are environmental variables in the next slide. So basically it has access to a environmental variable called path and in this path um, there are a list of directories that are stored. So basically when a user is trying to run a command, uh, Shell looks for the executable for that command in the list of directories that are specified in the path variable. So basically path uh, variable contains a colon delimited list of directories um, where basically the shell first looks for the executables for a command. So path as we said is an environmental variables and environmental variables in Linux are specified in capital letters. So environmental variables are available system wide and they define the behavior of the environment and they have the ability to process ongoing, affect the ongoing processes or the programs that are executed in the environment. So the picture in the right shows a list of all the environmental variables that are present in my system. And I have pointed uh, towards the path variable where essentially you will see um, a colon delimited list of uh, directories. So to put this all together, I will switch screens now to the terminal to show you how to add a directory to the path so that when I type a command, um, Shell knows exactly uh, what directories to search and it will not throw me an error saying that the command is not found. So I'm going to demonstrate how to add um, the executable for BWA MEM, which is an algorithm to align a whole genome sequencing reads to a reference genome. Uh, the one that we used in the previous video of uh, variant calling with GATK uh, and I want to show you how to add the directory for that executable in the path. So right now I am in the variant calling uh, directory and these are the folders that we created in the previous video. So let's say I want to run BWA in this directory. So when I type BWA, it throws me an error saying that BWA command not found. Also when we echo the path that is the environmental variable to see what directories are stored within path. Uh, if you notice, we do not have any directory that uh, points to the executable or that has the executable for BWA. Uh, just to show you that BWA is present in the system, I have downloaded BWA. This is the tools folder and I'll show you a list of the tools that I have and you can see that I have downloaded BWA so I'm just going to go into the BWA folder and I'm going to show you that BWA is present here so when I run BWA in this folder it runs fine and it does not show me an error saying that it is not able to find the command so the location of BWA is this basically so I want the shell to look for BWA in this folder when I write BWA outside this folder. So if I'm typing BWA in the variant calling folder, I want it to, I want the shell to look for the BWA executable in this folder because that's where the BWA executable is present. So I need to add this path 
to uh, this path to the directory to the environmental variable path so in this when i when i type echo path it should also have uh, this uh, location uh, saved in um, this environmental variable so the way we add uh, this location and save this location in the path variable we type export path equals to in the quotes we copy the path to the bwa folder the executable and we type path at the end and we run so now when you run bwa you should not be getting the error because now when you write bwa shell can look into this path as this path is present in the path environmental variable so let us also echo the dollar path and we can see that bwa has been added to the path variable and now it will not throw you an error saying that bwa command not found now again when we try to save the location of the executable using this method uh, a problem with this method is that the change is temporary so let me just close the terminal and open a new terminal and here when i type bwa again it shows me that bwa command is not found so why was the change not permanent so when we also type um, echo path we again see the path variable reverted back to the original list of directories we do not see the directory for bwa added so why did uh, the changes not stay so it it seemed that once we close the uh, the 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 window the terminal window the changes reverted back so the change only lasted until we were working in that terminal window once we closed the terminal window and restarted the terminal uh, the path went back to the original configuration and the changes that we made were lost so how can we make a permanent change so that every time uh, let's say you want to uh, run bwa without having to write the complete path in the script you will have to make some permanent changes such that the path variable will always contain the list to um, the the path to that uh, executable so that's where um, the dot bash rc and dot bash profile um, files come into the picture so if you're hearing the about these files for the first time these files uh, are the startup files so when bash is starting up it reads configuration files uh, to uh, set the environment and these are among the many configuration files that it reads from so basically uh, dash dot bash rc and dot bash profile allows for user um, customizations uh, the dot is present before these files uh, to indicate that these are hidden files and I will uh, show you how to look at these files in the terminal. So depending on the type of the shell that you are using that is a login shell or a non-login shell. So login shell is basically a shell where you put in your uh, password to get into the terminal and a non-login shell does not require a password. So depending on what type of shell you're using, um, it, it requires or it reads from different files. So the login shells reads from the uh, .bash profile uh, file and the non-login shells read from the .bash RC um, on startup. So let me go back to the terminal to show you uh, what these files look like and how to uh, make these changes permanent so that every time you run BWA, even after restarting the terminal, the path variable will not go back to the original configuration. So let us first take a look at where these files are and how to take a look at these files. So these files are always present in your root directory and since these are hidden files you can look at these files by using a command called ls hyphen a hyphen a will show you all the hidden files so all the files that are starting with a dot are hidden files so when you just type ls you will not be able to see the hidden files so when we type uh, ls hyphen a we are able to see uh, bash profile and bash rc and let us take a look at the contents of these files so we type in cat to take a look at the contents of these files and type in dot bash rc and you'll be able to see that this is an empty file again the shell that i'm using is a login shell so hence login shell reads from the bash profile but not from the bash rc and hence bash rc is empty so let us take a look at bash profile now 
and bash profile seems to have some information stored in uh, within it so basically uh, these are the lines where um, we are exporting the path to certain executables and saving it in the path variable basically so when we type in echo path these are the um, list of directories that are displayed so here i want to add uh, another list of directory that it should search and it should look for every time um, the terminal starts and any time that i write bwa so i'm going to add in another line below this line uh, with the path to bwa so to edit the bash profile we'll use a, a tool called vim which is used to um, edit text files so I will open uh, bash profile, I will click on E to edit, then I will type I insert and I will repeat the same command. So the one that we ran on the terminal. So the directory is stored for the executable is stored in demo in tools and the directory is called BWA and I want to store it in the path variable. So now that I have written the path to the executable for BWA, I'm going to type on escape colon WQ to save and quit my changes. And now to see if the changes have been reflected. So now when we type BWA, it is not going to throw us an error saying that it did not find the command because the path to BWA is saved in the environmental variable. Here, here we have the path to the executable, the folder which contains the executable. Now you can execute BWA from within any folder um, regardless of the location because the path to the folder which contains the executable is stored in the path variable. So adding the executables to various tools can make it easy for you in terms of not having to remember all the time as to the exact path to the executable as well as it makes your code appear cleaner. So this is considered as among one of the good practices when you're trying to build a pipeline to have all your executables, the ones uh, for the tools that you are using very frequently like FastQC or uh, an aligner like BWA, it is helpful to have the executables for these files in the path. So that was a quick uh, video on um, a basic Linux concept as to how to add the executables to the path. So I hope you found this video helpful and it helped you understand some of the things which might have not been clear um, when I made a note of this in the previous uh, video. So if you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.